Now, doctors at a private hospital in Chennai have uh, performed uh, what they're calling Asia's first lung transplant on a COVID-positive patient. The 48-year-old uh, businessman from Gurgaon is the patient and doctors say he is doing well with his new lungs working well. Well, let's go across to Dr. K. R. Balakrishnan. He is the chairman and the director of the Heart and Lung Transplant Program at the MGM uh, Healthcare. Now joining us, Dr. Balakrishnan, uh, congratulations first to you and your whole team. Lung transplants are, are, are very complicated procedures in normal times and here you are conducting this in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic I can imagine uh, this uh, does this also put your you, the entire team the doctors lives at risk too uh, as in uh, did the patient have the coronavirus at the time of the operation no the patient uh, was a known patient of coronavirus but uh, at the time of the transplant uh, two consecutive tests were negative uh, but he was on a ventilator for two months and uh, ECMO support for 35 days. And uh, his lungs were not showing any signs of improvement. He was very sick. So we decided to go ahead and do the transplant. Uh, there is a risk involved for the health care personnel because even though the tests were negative, we, we are dealing with an uh, open chest where the lung has to be removed from the body. So nobody in the world knows what happens. Are there any risks involved with it's a risk that we have to take, I guess. And um, so obviously um, a more complicated case than you're saying because this patient had been uh, undergoing treatment for corona that too that had affected his lungs directly, which is often the case as what we're seeing from people who've been complaining of being affected uh, by coronavirus. Their lungs are first affected. So the lungs had been damaged more than they would normally have. So it was an, there was an urgency to this case. The lungs were extensively damaged. His oxygen saturation was 55%. So we had to put him on ECMO, which is an artificial uh, heart lung machine, which oxygenates the blood. And he was on it for 35 days, which is a very long time. And because he was uh, barely moving or walking, all his muscles were weak. So he required extensive uh, physical rehabilitation. And we really had no other choice but to offer him a transplant because lungs were replaces fibrous tissue. Hmm. So doctor, I have to ask you, this is, um, this is a very difficult time for anybody who has a seriously uh, unwell person in their family, loved ones, because you have to uh, debate whether we go in for treatment, uh, what decisions you take, medical procedures, whether they will be carried out. Uh, there are lots of fallouts of this. So was this a dilemma for you uh, and your team, whether to take on this case? It's a huge dilemma from several points of view. One is the uh, the fact that he's been in a hospital for more than two and a half months. There are mounting expenses. The family doesn't know what to do. There is a young man of 48 is getting sicker by the day and uh, not even able to breathe. And there is a finite time for which anyone can be supported on ECMO. Correct. You can't go on forever. So. Yes. Uh, we have to make a choice, and uh, we, we got an offer of a good pair of organs from a young donor, and we thought this would be his best chance. Fortunately, he's done well. He's off ECMO and he's off the ventilator. He's breathing on his own for the first time in two, three months and with excellent lung function. That's so, one. Uh, hoping that's wonderful news uh, and uh, news that one should publicize. So I want to ask you what the significance of this lastly is, Dr. Balakrishnan, because uh, uh, are we saying that the lung transplant may be the answer to many uh, COVID survivors whose lungs are like have been affected by fibrosis? Are we saying that this could be the, what you have done and managed to pull off? Uh, is that now, could that set a precedent uh, going forward uh, in this pandemic? I wouldn't say it's an answer because the number of donor lungs worldwide is uh, not in unlimited supply. But certainly in a given case, you have to choose your patients carefully, those who are otherwise fit and have only one organ which is not functioning. But certainly I think ECMO as a modality of support uh, can save a lot more lives uh, because it, that technology has been around for a while and now it's become very sophisticated. And so we can support patients on ECMO for up to several months now, uh, giving the lung time to heal. And it depends on how the lung heals. If there's a lot of fibrous tissue involved in healing, 
some of them might be taking candidates for a transplant perhaps yeah Okay, and lastly, doctor, this uh, discussion would be incomplete if we didn't ask. I'm sure viewers would be interested in knowing how much does this cost? How much would it cost uh, the family uh, if uh, they needed to and uh, were required to carry out this procedure? Yeah, unfortunately, these are expensive therapies all over the world. Um, a typical lung transplant in our hospital would cost around 30 lakhs. Uh, it's, it, I know it's a lot of money. But the government of Tamil Nadu, for instance, funds almost 25 to 30 lakhs for poor uh, BPL patients for uh, transplant as it is. So um, if the state government were to come forward and help, I think that would be a huge step forward in making it affordable for patients to access this therapy. Dr. Balakrishnan, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, and uh, congratulations to you and your entire team. Thank you so much.